Hi book lovers! We're gonna have a lot of fun today for this video. Probably more fun for you because I'm gonna react to one star reviews of some of my favorite books and I'm a bit scared because I get offended easily when I love something and someone else bashes it but I thought you know we're gonna have some fun and I always say we're all allowed to our own opinions and sometimes I just have to remind myself of that. I have my phone here so that's why I'm looking down sometimes because I'm gonna read it from here. So I asked my boyfriend to actually screenshot me the one star reviews that I should read but I haven't read them yet so they're all here those ugly opinions but I haven't read them yet so you will have my raw honest reaction for them and I'm I'm slightly scared not gonna lie and if you're offended with me then I'm there with you we can still love this book none of these opinions will switch my mind I do think that with some I will probably understand where they're coming from but I still rather chose to ignore that side but if you agree with any of these reviews don't let me know <laughs> i don't want to know so he chose four books from the bunch i gave him that i rated five stars and the first one is bride by ellie hazelwood which i can see can be quite controversial then wrecked by lauren asher then marriage for one by ella mays and the last one the simple white by k tucker so let's start which one did i say first bright right first i think i want to know what the average rating actually is on goodreads okay wow the average rating is actually 4.1 which i think is really good on goodreads and i obviously contributed with that with my five star rating but let's see what other people thought okay so the first one says a paranormal romance that's ashamed to be a paranormal romance which produces a writing that is both cowardly and inept <laughs> oh my god any genuine lover of the genre will see bright for the one nonsense it is. Hazelwood's existing fan base will feel right at home with the works in STEM main character. Yeah, that is kind of true. <laughs> There's no real exploration of vampires, werewolves or the concept of faded maids because this isn't really a paranormal romance. And this goes on, but I can see so far how someone who really loves paranormal romance would think that because honestly I'm not a paranormal romance reader so I can't really say if what she wrote is on that spectrum very light I don't know but I think for someone who doesn't really read it often it was an easy entry to paranormal romance and I really enjoyed that but they're probably way I don't want to say crazier but way more paranormally books out there and that could definitely be true and I'm sorry for her that she felt that way but I understand that but I think also since Ellie Hazelwood comes from like the contemporary romance thing it already was quite a big thing with her fan base to venture into paranormal romance and I think she did a great job for that but it goes on with it's a modern rom-com straight from AO3 where this guy where the guy also happens to have a knot Oh my god, yeah, the knot thing was was throwing me off, for example. Hazelwood seems to have forgotten that a great many men already have two fists. <laughs> she could have saved us all a lot of trouble if she remembered. I think the knot thing actually comes from... Is it the Omega verse? I don't really know. As I said, I'm not really into paranormal romance or into Omega verse at all. But yeah, I, I understand that. I think still one star for that is really harsh because anyhow it was still a good book i don't know i think the vampire thing and the werewolf thing were explained quite good but also with the stem thing what i actually really liked is that she kind of stayed true to her tone that she explained a lot in the world with like biology and physics and that kind of stuff and you know she comes from a science background so i liked that but i also see how someone didn't like it so you know i don't actually feel too offended by that one so I feel like we are already off to a good start. This wasn't too hard. Um, the second one just says, love millennials, but this is published Wattpad. Mm, also kind of see where it's coming from because I always say that Ellie Hazelwood's writing kind of feels like fan fiction, but I never mean it in like a way that her writing is not good quality her writing is phenomenal you get all the tropes that you're longing for like that you know that fan fiction it that you sometimes have like i feel like she satisfies that but not in terms of that her writing is not qualified like her writing is still so so good i don't know i can't really explain it so i really disagree with that one but also kind of see where it's coming from and i have the last one which is actually quite quite long um but we'll dive right into that one so if ellie Haywood has a thousand haters i'm one of them I already love that. 
If Ellie Hazelwood has 100 haters, I'm one of them. If Ellie Hazelwood has 50 haters, I'm one of them. If Ellie Hazelwood has one of one hater, it's me. So apparently we found that one hater. Let's see what she has to say. Other actual thoughts because I did actually read this. Enemies to lovers were, it is never to be seen, not even an ounce of it. What? That one I don't get. I don't know what enemies to lovers she read and I think that it could have been more, yes, because you know you can always have more. They didn't try to kill each other and they were actually kind of trying to be civil but the enemies to lovers came more from that werewolves and vampires are enemies in this world anyway and that's why the possibility of them really becoming an item wasn't really there. The second point is, do authors not get secondhand embarrassment giving their characters ter terrible names like Misery and Low? What do you have against Low? I don't understand that. That one I truly don't understand. And Misery, I don't know, I kind of thought that was fun and also, you know, we are in a different world and it's vampires and it really fitted the whole vibe of vampires and also like her journey, like the... Why do I explain every single point? I think this video will go on forever if I do that, but let's continue. Vampires instead of vampires in the is the cherry on top. Again, I thought that was clever, but she apparently didn't think that. That cover is giving 2013 Wattpad era. I don't know about that. I mean, it's basically looks like every other cover today. And I don't mean that in a bad way. I just, I don't think the cover is anything bad. I felt no chemistry between the characters. It's too bad because their friendship in Slowburn had potential. Yes, it had potential and it turned out great. Thank you very much. Of course, he growls, hisses and has a very husky voice. Yeah, do you not like that? Don't forget he's so big, his shoe size is 14 because that is very important and necessary information. His hands are also so big, it's engulfing her own, he towers over her because he's huge, do not forget. Yeah, I mean, you know, also, yeah, it's Ellie Hazelwood. If you don't like that, then maybe don't read another Ellie Hazelwood book because it's what she likes and I don't really mind that, to be honest, you know. Also, I don't think an author has to represent every single factor. It's, of course, nice when they add variety and I understand the critique, but at the end of the day, it's one person and if you don't like her characters, then just go to another person who you enjoy the characters way more. Obviously, he never actually hated her. He just had to kind of pretend. She just thinks he does because he can't stand the smell of her. Kind of like when Edward was near Bella the first time that she thought she reeked. Yeah, like that. So she carried this misconception about what he thinks about her. Obviously, he just has always liked her. He has been secretly obsessed with her because when I... They're not secretly obsessed, but pretend they are not. Never. Yeah, but again, you know, others do that too, so... I don't get the point. <laughs> of course, he's broody and grumpy and can be mean in the outside, but is actually a big softy deep down inside. Duh. Yeah, but do you not want him? Like, do you want him to be mean inside? I don't get it. Like, obviously, they need to have a softer side so we can like them as well. I mean, even in the end, if you fall for the villain, the villain has some redeemable character traits because otherwise, why would we root for them? I mean, maybe there are books like that out there, but... I wouldn't really be interested in reading them. Let's see if there's anything else worth mentioning. Oh, this one is actually really interesting. So she says that um, she doesn't, she can't picture misery and that the author still doesn't like describing to read to readers her characters enough to make them visualizing them. And I never have that problem because I don't really, I don't know, I think I never have a clear idea of the characters anyway. And even if they're described, I don't really, I don't really think about them too hard. I don't know. But actually, a friend of mine that I um, recommended Ellie Hazelwood to, and she really liked that, so this is not a bashing, but the one thing she said is that she can't really visualize the characters. She doesn't really know how they look like. But that is actually something that, yeah, a friend of mine also told me, which is interesting that this person is also saying it. But silver lining, what I like that in the reviews that she says, if you're excited for this, take my review with a grain of salt. As I haven't enjoyed this author before, so just because I didn't like it doesn't mean you won't, which is true. And I understand some of the points. I don't really agree with this because I freaking love the book. But yeah, let's move on. Which one do we have? We have Wrecked by Lauren Ashes. Okay, Wrecked has actually also really high rating. So the average rating for Wrecked is 4.13, which is also really good. I'm, I don't know why I'm surprised. I shouldn't be. I love this book. It's also, it's a third in the series. So, you know, people 
probably already like the series in general to continue with it but yeah it makes me so happy for the rating i love every single book in that series i don't know which one is my favorite book i don't want to choose to be honest but i think my favorite couple might be noah and maya because i love noah so much but i really really did like wrecked and honestly i can't think about one reason why someone wouldn't like it let's go into this one i'm so mad i'm so fucking mad sir lewis hamilton would never behave like that yeah but it's not oh my god <laughs> it's not like you know authors take inspiration from real world but they're not the same people i think we need to establish that and yet Jax kingston this fucking train wreck of a man who is probably the literal reincarnation of sir lewis behaves like this yeah, but it's it's not the same guy. I need to defend Lauren Asher. I mean, she's one of my favorite authors. He's described from the outside to look like Lewis, but I think she did a great job then to make the character really different because it's not the same person. It's just inspiration. And I wouldn't like if, you know, everything would have been the same because then you just think of Lewis Hamilton. But, you know, this is a fictional character. So yeah, let's continue. Ugh, I hated him. I hate their relationship. What? I hate that Lauren Asher felt obligated to pair someone as wanker as Jax. Oh my god, with someone pretty much decent like Elena. He's one of the most cyclothemic. Oh my god, I don't even know what that means. I need to go cyclothemic? What does that mean? I'm sorry, I'm not native, so. Okay, I couldn't, I couldn't find a translation. I don't know. I don't know what that means, but probably not a nice word. Characters I've ever read. It's not even funny being that stupid. What? Oh my god, like knowing what Jax goes through in the book makes me so sorry for him. Like, I just want to hug Jax after this. What's wrong with authors writing annoying, dumb ass and idiotic characters? Do they really think we like them? Yes, we do. And they're not stupid. I wouldn't want a man like that near me, to be honest. What? Oh my goodness. Did we read the same book? Also, what was that extended epilogue and that spontaneous decision literally who makes such an important decision just like that size? Rand off besties, I hate Jax Kingston. Aua! This one hurt. The one thing I could maybe agree with is yes, the extended epilogue was a bit, I wouldn't say cringy, but yeah, it was a very quick decision for that. But also it was an extended epilogue, like, you know, of course, it's gonna be huge like that. We want perfect and then epilogue. You know, it's not really that part of the story, so maybe don't read it, but it's beautiful, so read it. All the extended epilogues in the Dirty Air series really make me want to read her Dirty Air series once she comes out with that. Who knows when that will be, but I get so excited to read those characters then because the extended epilogues already make that so exciting i don't know like i love them so actually i'm not really agreeing but i kind of see the point maybe but yeah i feel so sorry for Jax right now i think like there was so much pain in his book and so much hurt and yeah i just want to hug him now and move on from this review <laughs> let's do the second review for wrecked the plot in this book is better yet i still can't stand asher's writing style what it's like reading a Wattpad story. What? No, I don't I don't want to continue. Like, Lauren Asher's writing style to me is one of my favorite. But again, everyone has their own opinion. The amount of times I rolled my eyes and gagged reading this book is nothing compared to the first two books, which are just downright embarrassing. <gasps> oh my god. Jax acts like a child, but I can but I can resonate some empathy for him. Thank you. I still think this series is not worth your time. <laughs> Guys, the series is worth your time. Don't ever take these reviews seriously because I'm here to tell you that these books are amazing. I 100% disagree with this person's opinion. Like, I love the writing style. I don't think there's anything about Patty. Okay, let's do the next one. I'm so happy to be done with the series. This way, my masochistic tendencies can't get the better of me anymore. There's nothing more there to read and thank God for that. If you love F1 as much as I do, just do yourself a favor and don't read them. Ignore them for your own good, just like I should have done. What? <laughs> no. Oh my god, I can't believe that someone actually doesn't... Like, it's not even the book they criticize. It's the whole series they criticize. I can't believe someone wouldn't like the series, to be honest. I mean, if you don't like romance, but if you like romance, I feel like those books are amazing. And maybe not every single one in the series, but, you know, I... 
I can't believe it. But yeah, let's move on to the next book maybe uh, because I feel like those reviews were way harsher. I hope you guys are having fun because my heart hurts for Jax especially right now. So the next book is Marriage for One and I feel like I can kind of see where criticism can come from with that book and I'm not here to read it. Honestly, I don't want to know the criticism because that book I love so much. It's like a comfort read to me and I don't want to know that people don't like it, but let's see what they have to say. Okay, Marriage for One has an average rating of 3.8 seven which is also not bad but yeah i feel like one star ratings from here could be a bit harsher i don't get it whoever gave this five star must have read it while under general anesthesia um no i was wide awake and i gave it five stars clumsy prose that was so roaring it made my eyes bleed vanilla as fuck uninteresting characters terrible dialogue i gave up at 30 percent life so short the quality of romance is hitting rock bottom i'm boycotting until it gets better what no okay first of all i feel already good that she didn't finish the book so she can't judge the whole book only the first 30 percent like that's what i mean where i could see where people come from that the vanilla part or that it's a bit more boring because the plot is not all too interesting it's very character driven or not even character driven it's just this book is so much about a relationship between two people who don't know each other who are forced or not forced but who agree to marry and I don't know I love that book so much like with all my heart I love the comfort of the book and those two people how they like what they do for each other I think it's so great and I don't think it's vanilla at all I mean there's nothing wrong with being comfortable you know yes there is nothing crazy going on in this book but it is so beautiful how much they care and love each other and you know you can really like you are really with them when they fall in love like oh no moving on moving on was i on crack the first time i read this i must have been to enjoy it and read it well this book and these two characters were so boring as watching paint dry which incidentally there were like two whole chapters detailing their adventure and fucking painting couldn't even get through one third on this book goodbye <laughs> Okay, so this person originally rated it higher, but again, it's basically the same really, where they think it's a bit boring and they also didn't finish it. So again, I feel already better that they haven't finished the whole book. I get that this book might not be for everyone. If you haven't read this book yet, don't feel discouraged to read it because of these reviews, because I really don't think it's boring at all. Okay, the next one is... This one was tough. I kept thinking it was gonna get better one minute only to be let down by the time I got to 50%. I felt like Jack was on the spectrum, which could make for a beautiful story, but I just couldn't connect to him and the eccentricities. Oh my God. Moreover, I couldn't connect to Rose who smelled like a 1950s housewife and a completely oblivious Disney princess all rolled into one. If you want a good slow burn, read anything by Mariana Zapata, but especially Mariana Zapata's book wall of winnipeg i feel like there's really a theme going on with the criticism which you know that most people think it's a bit boring and i think you guys are wrong but let's move to the next one so she listed the tropes here let's just hear the tropes and then i feel like you already see that it, this is a great book marriage of convenience grumpy hero quirky heroine oh, i don't know if she's quirky but more like sunshiny slow burn what more do you want honestly the cover is great, but the story... The cover is great. Is she referring to the original one? I mean, I think the guy is hot on it, but is it a great cover? I don't know. I don't really love the cover. Why am I talking about the cover so much? The cover is great, but the story really felt dull for me. I like Slow Burn, but this one did not understand the assignment. I think 65% of this book's word count could be cut out of the entire plot would still be there. Yeah, I mean, that is kind of true, but it's not about the plot, guys. It's not unnecessary sentences monotonous dialogue it was the writing that did not appeal to me the major plot was okay though okay so she did like the plot okay but i don't know i think the writing was incredible again i mean if it's not for you it's not for you i guess um is that all for marriage for one i think so 
Okay, then we come to our last book, which is The Simple Wild. Let's see what rating The Simple Wild has on Goodreads. I feel like The Simple Wild also has a lot of potential for criticism, but oh no, the average rating is 4.3. I'm just glad for a favorite book of mine that it has a high rating. I love that. So it just shows that the majority agrees with me, which I don't know. I feel like I didn't expect that, but I love the book. So why shouldn't I expect it? <laughs> Let's read some of the not so great reviews of that. So we have here. When a book has two white women use the phrase Arabian admirer in the first few chapters, I'm already out. All right, I can't remember that to be honest, so don't know. Also, having the men love interest say, so this is what you look like without all this shit on your face. <laughs> Ouch. I mean, I will say I hated that too. Like, I didn't like that plot line with the makeup and it was a bit unnecessary to me, but I could overlook that. And various others iteration of some level of disapproval. I didn't know we were still judging women for liking makeup in the 21st century. Yeah, I will say that that is honestly valid because that's also something I didn't love, but I totally could overlook. But yeah, that was definitely one thing that I didn't like. So... Oh my god, I can't believe I'm agreeing with a one-star review, but let's read the next one. I hated this book so much. I think this is gonna be a juicy one. First of all, the hero sucked. Jonah is one of the most insufferable characters you can ever read. <laughs> he was so misogynistic, kept shaming the female lead about wearing makeup and shorts for existing. What the fuck? Yeah, as I said, kind of get that. But he was not insufferable to read. I love Jonah so much took her luggage that she needed because he thinks that she looks better without makeup. Yeah, blamed her for not having a relationship with her father that didn't care about her for 26 years and tried to invalidate her feelings. I can't understand how people even like this book. Oh my god. Yep. I mean, as I said, I can understand the whole makeup thing. I really didn't like that either. And also with the blaming of her relationship with the father, I don't want to go too much into it because obviously I don't want to spoil the book for you if any one of you haven't read it yet. But I feel like there was an explanation why he did what he did and it made totally sense. And you know, Hero to me doesn't need to be flawless and perfect in order for me to like him. And if he does something, you know, it just needs to be explained why the person is like that. Because we humans are complicated and what we experience make up to the person that we are, the way we behave and why we do certain things. And I think it was explained quite well in this one. But let's read the next one. <laughs> I love this one. This is the worst thing I've ever fucking read. Stop writing books, stop it. Also I love that there is no explanation for it. That person just really hated the book. Okay, so this is gonna be the last one for today. And it says, lol, no, the only thing going for this book was the father-daughter relationship and Simon. And if not for that, I would have DNF'd it as soon as I heard Jonah speak. What? I loathe the romance in this book and thought Jonah was absolutely garbage. <gasps> Oh my god. I mean, I like that you still continue to book for the other relationships, but apparently that didn't bump the book up at least to two stars. So Jonah really destroyed the book for you. But honestly, I love Jonah so much and I feel like those people are not giving him enough credit. But yeah, that was it. I think I expected even worse. I think the one that hit the most was the one about hating the Jack so much because I think, I don't know, I love the book so much. I love the Dirty Air series so much and seeing people hating the whole series was not nice. I hope that you had some fun in this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. I can definitely do one of these in the future or even the reverse way so that I read five star reviews of books that I rated one stars. I think that would be also very fun. Give this video a like and subscribe for more bookish content and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.